Hi, I'm Dr. Rashmi Yogesh, Consultant Fertility Specialist, Kushi Fertility and IVF Center, Bengaluru, Karnataka. ICSI or intracytoplasmic sperm injection is a treatment offered to couples who find it difficult to conceive either naturally or with intrauterine insemination. ICSI is a boon for men who have reduced sperm counts, abnormal looking sperms and reduced sperm motility. The ICSI procedure is a procedure where every mature egg is injected with a normal looking sperm by experienced embryologists under high magnification microscope with a fine glass needle which we call micropipette. After injecting the sperm into the egg, the further observation of the embryo formation would result in the formation of an embryo that would be then used for the embryo transfer. The ICSI procedure can also be used for sperms that are obtained from the testicular tissue as most of these sperms would be immotile. Even for frozen semen samples, when the thaw motility rate is reduced, ICSI gives more fertilization rates as compared to the conventional IVF. In the conventional IVF, there has to be natural capacity of the sperms to penetrate into the oocyte. In ICSI, the natural capacity of the sperm to penetrate the oocyte is no longer required. There are concerns regarding the occurrence of genetic syndromes with ICSI, but however, most of the times, it is the genetic problems that cause infertility that results in issues rather than the procedures like ICSI that are done to cure infertility. So it is not that ICSI can result in direct genetic problems. Only the male factor and the if the man has a genetic problem, this could be passed on to the future generation by doing the ICSI procedure. But however, the risk of this passing on to the further generation is almost equally high even when the pregnancy happens spontaneously. In the ART, that is the ICSI and the conventional IVF, there are six important steps. One is the stimulation of the ovaries to produce follicles. Second, ultrasound monitoring to understand if the follicles are growing with respect to the hormonal stimulation the ovaries are receiving. And the third one would be the ovum pickup which is done under general anesthesia. And the fourth step would be the ICSI or the conventional IVF which is done in the IVF lab. The fifth step would be monitoring of the embryo growth in the lab on a daily basis which could occur for three days, five days or even six days. And the sixth and the most important step is the embryo transfer. During the ovulation induction, injections are given on a daily basis for about 8 to 11 days. These injections have to be taken at a fixed time on a daily basis and one should ensure that none of these injections are missed. These injections are the FSH and the HMG injections that are given to increase the follicular growth. The third most important injection that is given is the antagonist injection which is started from the 6th day of or the 7th day of the menstrual cycle and this is the injection which is given in antagonist protocol to prevent the follicles from rupturing till the ovum pickup is done. Further steps involve ultrasound monitoring of the ovaries to find out if the follicles are growing synchronously. One continues to do the follicular monitoring till the day the follicles attain a size of 18 to 19 millimeters and then the final injection that is a trigger injection of the human chorionic gonadotropin is given to attain final maturation of the oocytes. After the ovum pickup is done, the follicular fluid is given to embryologists to examine under high magnification microscope. The oocyte cumulus complexes are all screened and they are uh, the blood clots are separated and these are cultured in the incubator for about 3 hours after which the ICSI or the conventional IVF is performed. After doing the ICSI or the conventional IVF, after about 18 hours they are checked for fertilization. And later on, on a daily basis, the embryos are checked for further growth. In the conventional method, the embryos are taken out of the incubator and seen on a daily basis. We also have the time-lapse technique or the embryoscope in which the embryos need not be taken out of the incubator or the culture system on a daily basis to be examined. After a span of 3 days or 5 days, the embryos are then taken up for the embryo transfer. 
in cases where the embryos have to be grown beyond the third day there is a change in the culture media on the third day up to the third day the embryos grow in media which simulates the one which is there in the fallopian tube and after the third day the embryos are kept in a media which is similar to the media which is there inside the uterus this is because the journey of the oocyte after fertilization from the fallopian tube to the uterus involves a transition from the tubal fluid to the one which is in the uterus and we try to simulate the same atmosphere in the lab and the incubator simulates the human pelvis the temperatures that are there in the fallopian tube and the uterus are try to be simulated inside the incubator with the culture media that we use and once the embryos are formed they are graded and the embryo selections is something which is supposed to be the most important step to attain a very good pregnancy rate the embryologists and the clinicians sit together discuss and decide as to which of these embryos that look the most normal have to be chosen for transfer we either decide on a single or a double embryo transfer depending on the patient parameters which includes the age the number of ivf in the past and also the size of the uterus we decide on doing the embryo transfer on a particular day which is usually the third or the fifth day after the ovum pickup is done in some cases where embryos cannot be transferred because of factors like increased estradiol levels risk of hyperstimulation or when the endometrium is not well prepared we choose to vitrify these embryos and then thaw them on a later date when the endometrium is well prepared either naturally or with hormonal tablets and then transfer the embryos the embryo transfer procedure is done without anesthesia under ultrasound guidance and one ensures that the embryos are transferred under vision exactly in the mid cavity and not in the lower or in the upper uterine cavity the maximum implantation point is decided and then the embryo transfer is performed after which the woman is asked to take rest for about 10 to 15 minutes on the embryo transfer couch and then carry out with all her routine work